Yeah, definitely. That sounds just like me. All, all yeah, all off season I said your quiz is like a great running back and he's really good and he's gonna keep, you know, Martin at bay, be the starter because I'm a stupid person. You're listening to Let's Talk Fantasy Football, where men of fantasy genius have realized. Hey guys, we don't need real football skills to dominate on the fantasy field. Oh, yeah. So slap on your pads and grab your helmet. Shit's about to get real. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Let's Talk Fantasy Football. I am your host, Nick Shrek, and joining me tonight is my favorite, Vinny Gonzalez. Vinny, what is up? Ah, thanks for the intro, Shrek. You know how much I love that. You got um, it, man. It's it's great to be here with you. It's great to have you on the show. Uh, and we're here to talk a ton of football, some sob stories, some personal sob stories, and some personal wins. Uh, we watched AJ, AJ Green have a big week. I can't imagine how big the smile was on your face. Um, and uh, there, was, there was a lot of good for, for Vinny this week, at least on the TV screen. Yeah, for sure. Always excited when the Bengals do well, too. It's just like that extra, extra bonus for me. Just like uh, Vinny loves life, and then Bengals win and just makes it better. This kid may be the most positive guy you're ever going to meet in, in life, guys. So when you're down, you need something, just uh, just think of Vinny. You know? uh, just don't ever look for the unreleased podcast of Vinny post Bengals loss at 3 a.m. self-recorded. Uh, Holy shit. Because that flash, was a, flash from the past, man. <laughs> that, that, was a, that, was a, that was a dark time. That was the one and only uh unreleased episode maybe one day we'll we'll auction that off for big bucks christ yeah when i run for office just let that loose yeah you got it man vinny vinny in his true his true form uh but before things go completely off the rails vinny let's give a shout out to bench boss uh, our longtime podcast listeners know them as view pick but they have a brand new name guys they are now officially bench boss they're still a revolutionary app that allows you to play fantasy football live while watching the game on tv predict the plays the result of the play and literally play fantasy football you can sign up for the beta now by going to let's talk fantasy football.com backslash bench boss and lucky for us guys we got into the beta testing this week and Vinny was actually our beta tester here at let's talk fantasy football so Vinny, tell tell us what went on man what, what's the app all about uh, it was awesome. I, I was addicted like almost immediately. I was very impressed with just how simple and how fun it was. All you have to do is select either pass rush or defense, and then you get fantasy points banked on that as long as the positive outcome happens for the uh, choice that you make. So I had a lot of fun with it. I uh, don't want to reveal too much, like you said, with the uh, beta test still going on, but I'm really looking forward to like the full launch and everything like that. But I will say it was a tough Monday night game to predict because of Trubisky and uh, Sam Bradford going in and out, and it was just uh, real tough. But I did wind up calling that play-action pass that wound up being uh, a touchdown for Zach Miller there, which I was very happy. Just like the endorphins just got released. I'm like, hell yeah. So <laughs> it was definitely uh, really exciting, a lot of fun, and uh, I can't wait till other people get their hands on it because it is definitely very cool. Oh, yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah, your text when I came in, you, uh, you, were, you were living large. You were like, I'm ready to coach a fucking football team. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Um but yeah, no, we, I was super jealous, uh, you know, with the testing that I could, I didn't get in this week, but, uh, super exciting. We won't give any more away for the bench boss team. We'll let them kind of do their big reveal guys, but they are adding more users every week. So for your shot to get into that, let's talk fantasy football.com backslash bench boss. And, uh, we're excited to let you guys get on there and take part. So Vinny, let's just, let's get into it. We talked about bench boss. We're here to recap week five games and uh, we had some big news today. Mark Ingram is free with a capital F. But that is not. That is the headline it should be because because no one should really care about AP going to the Cardinals, at least, at least in my opinion, because he's still going to a semi crowded backfield. I know it's going to be him, Andre, um, Andre Ellington, and I guess Kerwin Williams is still in the mix, even though he's terrible. It's still kind of crowded there, and the same pass catching back that kicked him out of the Saints in uh, Alvin Kamara is pretty much the same thing going on there with Ellington. So uh, I'm not loving AP's move, even though I'm sure he'll get more work than the eight or nine carries he was seeing. But the situation is going to be the same. If AP's in the game, you got to be thinking run if you're the defense, and you're going to wind up stuffing him. And the Cardinals... I don't know if you guys have been watching Palmer running for his life, but they have no offensive line this year, and they are going to get ravaged. Palmer's bad. And start quote, end quote. Palmer's bad. The Cardinals are bad. I mean, like you said, the touches are there for AP, but they, uh, they're they just Maybe. 
Maybe. We don't even know. You're right. We, we don't even know. AP could awesome. go there, and he could blow up on the sideline just like he did in the, with the Saints, and we'll have some more gifts and fun memes to put out there of AP. Yeah, I mean, and another thing you got to think about is he's losing a lot of time because he's making them switch over to the Cardinals. He's got to learn the playbook. I'm sure he's, like, fine with that or whatever, and it's something I will never comprehend, but it's going to take some time. And, like, the most I could think is he'll go in on some goal line situations, but we also thought that with the Saints, and that didn't happen. Yeah, and then he, yeah, exactly. And then you got uh, Tampa Bay this week, which is a nice matchup. But I'm not. I don't. I can't imagine someone playing AP with any kind of confidence. And then yeah. they're away at the Rams, and then he's already got his bye week, so he's missing a decent amount of time there. So think about that if you're considering picking up AP. And then the schedule is it looks good on paper for like a rushing aspect of it but then it's it's very tough defenses that should be getting after the cardinals so limiting their opportunities so this whole ap thing i'm, I'm very, as you can tell i'm not fucking thrilled besides that ingram is finally potentially loose yeah, that, that's all this is about it's not about ap it's about ingram finally possibly being free and and we'll see we'll see how that unfolds because the saints always find a way to screw mark ingram so for all we know he'll get cut before the next, this week's game and that'll solve the mark ingram debate but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see their take on the preview podcast coming out later this week. Uh, but Vinny, let's, let's start with the injuries because they were kind of the big story of, of week five. We lost some big names to season long injuries and let's start with the New York giants who I'm pretty sure every able body wide receiver they had pretty much got injured. Um, starting with the big one, Odell done. He's done for the season. Uh, as is Brandon Marshall completely done for the season. Um, and is Harris done for the season or is he just out? Harris is done too. He was actually the first one ruled out. He broke his foot. So he oh. is out. Roger Lewis becomes the guy. And <laughs> Roger Lewis. Right. Come on. How do you not know that, man? No, I, I'm being I'm being a smart ass. Like who? Like, it's a no name. <laughs> He's a complete bum. But he will be the one. And I guess it's he, he's like worth I don't know if he's even worth the pick. Like first of all, they go right into Denver for this weekend. Yeah, so. fuck that. No, I don't want any part of the Giants at all. Yeah, it's just not looking great. And then I know people who are losing Odell. Like it's, it's just irreplaceable. You're you're yeah. not. It's. I mean, you're facing the thing. You're facing the situation right now. Yeah, it, it's it sucks because you know again that first round pick and look people lost David Johnson and we've heard from a lot of people this week who've lost you know David Johnson and somehow Odell on some teams. I don't know how you people draft, but uh, you know. It is what it is. It sucks. Uh, but I don't think you're finding your replacement wide receiver here with the Giants uh, because we have a no-name guy. They're going into Denver. Shepard's in a, Sterling Shepard's in a walking boot, um, you know, for his ankle. They said the injury is similar to the one that he missed 10, 10 uh, days for earlier this year. Uh, so we have to wait and see what's going to happen with him. Um, you know, bad matchup. Injuries galore. The Giant wide receivers suck. That's it. Case, end of story. Absolutely. And it sucks because this isn't a great – um week for like picking up wide receivers either it's pretty running back heavy on the wire i think uh for for week six so you're shit out of luck right now it's it's looking really really rough yeah and we're gonna jump into some of those waiver wire moves in in a couple minutes but yeah definitely not ideal it's definitely running more running back heavy uh to make any kind of move um but let's move off that let's move over to my chiefs who come out with a nice win again still undefeated feeling good uh but ultimately we lose uh Lose some guys to injury. Biggest one uh, right now, Travis Kelsey, with the concussion in the protocol. Said he had some memory issues, so we'll see if he can come back with all his same, uh, you know, hip thrusts and uh, you know gestures out on the field if his memory uh, comes back to him fully. Uh, but in all seriousness, you know, concussions are a serious thing. So hopefully he does bounce back and is ready for the game this week. Uh, but you know, he's in the protocol right now, so we kind of have to wait and see on Travis Kelsey. Uh, but he's been. Incredible in that Chiefs offense, as has has Alex Smith, uh, and we'll talk about him as well. Yeah, definitely. What was weird about Kelsey's injury? He left and came back in, yep, and then left again. So that made me really concerned. I was like, oh, he must not be right at all. Yep, yep. I think Don was doing the concussion evaluations on the sideline the first time he came out. Don checked him out real quick, said, "You're good, man. Get back in there." And then all of a sudden, he didn't know where he was, so they took him back off the field. That doesn't sound like Don. He's usually way more careful. Yeah, you're right. I, I might be wrong. I may have been off. Uh, I just could have my dates mixed up. That happens sometimes. Um, Vinny, Matthew Stafford injured uh, with the ankle. Uh, we expect him to play this week, though? Uh, I, I got to think so. He's one of the tougher quarterbacks out there, and he 
gutted it out to try and pull another comeback against the Panthers uh, this weekend. So yep. got to think he'll be out there. And they play the Saints, so that matchup is super appealing. Yeah, still. Uh, it, yeah it's still you're worried about the ankle. And, I mean, dude, when I, when I watched him get hurt and I watched him kind of do that, like limp off the field there, it, this sucks to say because we're going to talk about him in a minute. But I'm just like, oh, no, what about my shares of Eric Ebron? And, like, I should have been way worried about that beforehand. But – uh, then he comes out and throws the touchdowns to fucking Fells, and uh, you know that's that's the end of that. So we'll see what happens with Matthew Stafford, and we'll talk about my Ebron uh, foolishness a little bit later. Um, let's talk running back Terrence West. Uh, I believe he is going to be out, and it looks like Buck Allen's kind of the guy there, right? Yeah. So Terrence West went down pretty early in the game. Actually had a, a pretty good run, and then just went down immediately. Uh, injured his calf, and he's going to miss a few weeks. So. He's been dealing with the soft tissue stuff uh, the entire year. And it looks like, yeah, like you said, Buck Allen's going to be the lead guy. And then Alex Collins is going to work in a little more too because he's uh, continuing to get a lot of work done on very minimal opportunities. So I do like uh, both of those guys as like weekly options now. Absolutely. They're going to keep giving him more touches, but uh, Buck Allen, you know, he ends up having a nice week. uh, And I think he continues to do so, particularly until we see Terrence West come back and then, we can put it back maybe into whack ass backfields and then talk about that mix and match a little bit more. <laughs> and then Danny Amon, um, well, Danny Amendola, uh, Danny Woodhead will be also coming back around like week eight or nine. So that just that's a true that whack ass backfield. Yeah, that's going to get real bad real soon. Hell yeah, it is. Um, but he, Jordy Nelson, uh, he missed. I think it was what like the last five plays or something of the game or their last series. Or it was something something small like that. He insists he's fine, but dealing with the ham- hamstring injury uh, by all appearances, he should be fine for this week. Yeah, you'd think so. I'm a little just concerned overall. Like Jordy Nelson always has these kind of like gets, you know, hurt during a game and just kind of disappears. And on the last drive, you miss the entire thing. I was just, why wouldn't you want to like, well, not why wouldn't you want to be out there, but it's, I think it's pretty serious if he's not out there for, you know, the game winning drive. Yeah, you, you, you definitely want to be on the field. Like you said, he is always banged up. Unfortunately, I think he's going to be active. Uh, again, we'll see as we get closer, but he's going to be active. And if you own him and he's active, he's going to be in your lineup. But again, definitely something to keep your eye on and cause for concern because like you said, Jordy is is banged up. Um, and to be out on that last drive and then just say you're fine, uh, you know, math doesn't quite add up. Um Let's go to the Dolphins and talk, uh, not Jay Cutler, but Devontae Parker. Uh, he's got the ankle injury. I'm just looking at the most recent update here. Uh, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport says that the ankle injury is quote-unquote minor. Um, status is uncertain for when he's going to be back. Yeah, I think it's, uh, what is it, a day-to-day sprain? Yep. Yeah, so um, I would imagine if he's going to be active – I think it's kind of like the Jordy Nelson deal where you, or if he's active, you got to play him. Cause he, he has been, you know, really, really good. And yeah. Jay Cutler's number one target. And that's always good in fantasy, right? Shrek. Oh, always good, man. It's foolproof strategy. Jay Cutler's number one guy, always someone you can trust. Yeah. Um, just because he's Jay Cutler. Can't fail. No, definitely can't. Um, and there's a ton of sarcasm in there for those of you that can't pick it up. Let's move on to Charles clay, uh, Buffalo bills. He goes down, uh, Nasty little injury there for for Mr. Clay. Uh, I'm just trying to look at what the most uh, recent update on he um, he had a knee scope. Uh, there was it's a, like a it's a it's a minor surgery, but it's uh, going to keep him out for a few weeks, which is terrible because Charles Clay was right up there uh, with Zach Ertz for being like the best tight end of the year so far. Yeah, dude, it's, so. and tight ends a total shit show. Um, you know, you look at who's on the wire matchups. I mean, SJ came off wire last week, looked great. But you've got guys like me playing Eric Ebron. Uh, people lose Charles Clay. Um, you know, you could be rolling with some very, very questionable guys. Uh, yeah, and the the guy who I can't believe I'm going to say his name is Nick O'Leary, who is the backup tight end to Charles Clay, got targets all all day from Tyrod Taylor after that. So I think you could do a lot worse if that makes sense. I mean, I mean, if, as long as the tar- if the target share is there, you know, I mean, what. Uh, spin the wheel. If that's where you want to spin the wheel, I, you know, <laughs> I, can throw a, I mean, I can't say no because I've been playing Eric Ebron who I'm better off taking a chance on somebody else that could get me more than 2.3 points. So yeah, I mean, you, you could be worse off. 
Take a chance, man. Take a chance on Nick O'Leary. Nick O'Leary. Well, he's got a great first name, so maybe I maybe I will give him a real uh, a real shot. It's an okay first name. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I'll live with okay, man. As long as it's not bad. Um, Wild pal, uh, calf injury. He did not have a good game. Uh, oh, I mean, he got hurt, so it is what it is. But uh, he had that big week week prior. Uh, he's day to day with a strained calf. Um, but I, that situation is, I think, extremely interesting because you've got Forte. Uh, banged up, and then Elijah McGuire, who looks good. Um, not not great for Ball Pile. I don't know if he even goes this week. Yeah, I think they're leaning towards keeping him out, and then it's going to be a huge bump in workload for McGuire, which I think becomes like an instant start, even though it's against the Patriots, who did a lot better defensive-wise um, against the Buccaneers. So if you're going to get a full work full, full workload out of McGuire this week, he's a must-play. Uh, blow up how I'll be very nervous if he's active. Yeah, I don't think it, it didn't can, seem good at all. I don't think you can trust it. You know, again, like you said, with the injury, they're concerned now. So even if they're, you know, that he starts or he plays and he's, uh, I, I think you have to look elsewhere. Grab McGuire and, and roll the dice and play him, I guess. Would be my best, uh, best piece. Dude, who, who would think at this point in the season, I know I didn't, that the Jets are the better team coming out of Jersey? Uh, crazy times, man. Crazy it's time. shocking, dude. And I think, I mean, me and Walsh both picked the Browns to beat them too. And Don just, as he put it, disrespectful. And I, I guess we were. But <laughs> I just, I cannot believe what is happening with them. They have, they have to have one of the worst rosters in the NFL, but they're just making it work. It's incredible, man. They they find ways to win. Um, so I'm, I am shocked. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess they have been disrespected um, by as Don so eloquently stated, by uh, us and many others. So we'll probably watch them get blown out 42-0 to zero against the Patriots this week. Um, but, oh, yeah. That's going to happen. That's, watch, man. Hey, watch them somehow pull it out and hold on to first place uh, after being no. the Patriots. Yeah, I agree. No, no. my, my pick is definitely going to be the Patriots. But, you know, <laughs> you, give, you give the Jets fans uh, a little bit of something to hold on to. Um, let's talk about Stefan Diggs. Uh Gets hurt with the groin injury. Technically, the status is uncertain. It says here, uh, I don't really actually have an update. It just says uh, groin injury. Did you hear any more? Yeah, no, that was about it. He was uh, getting worked on the table, uh, coming in and out of the game like very frequently. He had the worst possible outcome of a game that you could have hoped for. Maybe you needed like five points out of digs or maybe even three, and he did not get that for you Monday night, so. Total, total bummer from Stefan Diggs, which is he's oh, he's so talented and so good when he's healthy, and he just cannot put together a healthy season. It nope. really sucks. Nope, it's terrible. Uh, but and like you said, you expect ah, oh, you people went into Monday night like you know oh, I got Diggs left. I only need three points. He's in the bag, and they had a very bad night. Boom. Very, very bad night. Uh, staying with uh, the Vikings, Sam Bradford underwent an MRI after leaving Monday's game with an uh, aggravation of his knee injury. They say the testing revealed no new injury, so it just sounds like he's still kind of suffering slash banged up from the uh, the previous injury. Um, yeah, which, and it, it's, it sucks because they don't know what it is, which is very concerning. So there's no timetable whatsoever, and it's based on if he thinks he can go, which he tried to do Monday, and it seemed like he forced himself back into the game. So just got to give it some time. Bradford's in the same you know grouping as Diggs. Like you just got to get healthy, and you're you're great when you're out on the field. Yeah, he is. And, you know, I mean, you look at the bat, the situation behind him, you know, uh, Case Keenum. And then, you know, today we hear that Teddy Bridgewater is going to be reevaluated on Monday, who was on the pop list. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I love Teddy Bridgewater, um, or at least I used to, um, you know, prior to his injury. So for those of you uh, that want some fun, look back to some of, some of the last year's episodes and you'll find some, some fun quotes from me on Teddy Bridgewater. Um, but you know, again, he's, he's not a legitimate threat to any of that right now, but just a little fun fact, because I do like, uh, like my boy, Teddy Bridgewater. I totally forgot all about him. Yep. Well, dude, because Brad, you know, I, I remember when they signed or, you know, got Bradford and I was like, this is crazy. Um, and you know, they're going to spend all this for what, for nothing. Bridgewater's going to be back. He's going to be fine. And here we are. Bradford is, you know, I mean, he's banged up, but he's played well for them. Um, and it was very easy to forget about Teddy Bridgewater uh, with the way things have kind of been going in Minnesota. So we'll see. I mean, I wish Teddy all the best, but that injury was very, very bad. So yeah, take that, some time. 
I would like to see him get back out there because I did enjoy Teddy at times. At times. Yeah, he showed flashes. Yeah, you know, whatever. He root for the underdog once in a while. I can, uh, I can get on board with that. Yeah, um, but, Vinny, let's switch over to waiver, the waiver wire, and let's talk about some guys who could be good pickups uh, based on what people need this week, uh, and then we can kind of talk through who our top picks and everything else are. But the first name I have in the list, guys, these are in no particular order. It's just kind of as we threw them on a list, so don't take them as uh, – you know, Bible, again, some of your waiver wires are going to process by the time our episode is live. Uh, but for those of you that do waiver wires like real men uh, for Thursday morning, uh, you'll have our input and advice. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, I think, is a good QB streamer if you guys need one. Uh, he gets the tight, uh, he gets the Titans this week. Yes, that's it. Um, so I think he's just an interesting name to, to watch if you need a QB. I am someone in that situation. Uh, if you're in need, I'm a Russell Wilson owner. Uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, but Brissett, I'm just trying to pull up his uh, some of his numbers here. He's had, a, I think, a rushing touchdown in, I think, four out of five of his games. Yep. So he, uh, he had his best game as a passer against uh, San Francisco. Uh, I think it's just not a great week for streaming QB. So I think against the Titans, it's not a terrible matchup. If you need somebody, uh, something to consider. Yeah, like you said, it's... There are good matchups, but there are bad quarterbacks. So yes. you offer Jacoby Brissett. I'll offer two disgusting names. Josh McCown versus the Patriots. Yuck. It's good on paper, but you shouldn't do it because it's gross. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> it's, you're right, though, on paper, but oh. Him, he could get it done. I'm just he, saying. He could. And uh, we're going back to the well, man. Carson Palmer gets the oh. bucks at home. Dude, they have a terrible defense. He could carve him up. He and he he actually didn't burn you if you played him like we suggested against the Eagles this week. He just didn't do phenomenal. I think he had 16 points. Which if you're streaming, you know, yeah. they, you can you can live with it. Take those points. Hell yeah. I'm just yeah. So like it's not crazy for like McCown or Carson Palmer to wind up with like somewhere in that 15-16 with the matchups that they have. It's just the name value is very shit. Yes. And how, how lucky do you feel? Because we watched Carson Palmer shoot the bed, and then we've watched Carson Palmer put up a performance after going back to the well. So we'll go back to the well one more time, and we'll let them talk through it on the preview podcast uh, as well. But just some, some QB names uh, to look at. Running back, we've got a ton of names on here, Vinny. Uh, we talked about Elijah McGuire, particularly with the expectation of Forte and Powell missing the game. Uh, I think he needs to be arguably, I guess, the top running back off of, off of waivers this week. Yeah, I completely agree, especially if you need to win like right now because he is going to give you an immediate impact. I don't know about season long, but hey, you got to win. You got to win games, man. So throw him in. He could be a weak winner for you. Yep. Yep. I agree. You got to start winning games now. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, uh, he looked like the better back. I think he is the better back. Um, Latavius Murray, I own him. I played him. Um, It was terrible. It was painful. Um, It appears he's the guy. Um, Again, if you want the running back in. In Minnesota, it's Derek McKinnon. Yeah, McKinnon, uh, rushing wise, broke that huge play, which was cool and all. Got the touchdown. I think that was, was it. Like, yeah, fifty four yards rushing wise, but the the passing work was what was neat because I think he got six or seven targets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. so that's yep. that's probably the part that he will sustain, and that is pretty cool for getting a waiver wire guy for season long because he's just going to be their passing guy. Yep. If you guys play in PPR, it's again, that's just it's a floor. It's a four that you you know you may not get other places, particularly with the way we're watching guys get injured and everything else fall. Adrian Peterson, Vinny, are, I, and we talked about it. We expect him to be bad. Should people be picking him up off the waiver wire this week? Uh, yeah, like they should, but I'm just I would I, I would pick up the like everybody that we're going to mention above him. Yeah, okay, I agree. I was to say I think you have to be. He's got to be a um like a third or fourth guy probably on your list of people you've got waivers in for. Um, and are probably guys that are on the bottom half of waiver options. You know, if you're in first place and you get the 10th, 10th spot or something, just because you know McGuire's going to go, you know McKinnon's going to go, you know some of these other guys are going to go. Um, could it work out? Sure, we just expect AP to be bad. Yeah, also, like, he's he's owned a very high percentage in, like, most of the fantasy leagues that are out there. So it's uh, people are holding on to him just because, you know, it's AP. So if he's not on the waiver, like, that is what it is. I mean, if he is, you can – this is like the ultimate flyer. Like you don't, you're just going into the abyss with AP again because you don't know what's going to happen. 
Yes. Which, you know, one, I think it's criminal that that many people still owned AP uh, going into this, but I guess if you held on to them, cool. Uh, you know, but guys, again, we're now in bye weeks. So you need to evaluate what you can real- realistically grab and hold on to and wait for. You know, is your team in a spot where you can afford to grab AP and sit on him? Because we don't know what we're going to get. You know, if you're in win now mode, AP is it's not a good pickup for you right now because you you know you want Maguire, you want some of these other guys. Like with my buys and everything else, I'm not picking someone up for the long term right now. I'm focusing on the very short term, fill my roster, try and win some games, and then as I come out of buys, I'll be okay. But just keep your roster construction in mind because I think people sometimes get drawn into that name factor. Adrian Peterson, great. Yeah. You're not going to have a lot of weeks to see like, oh, will it work? Because we already did that on the Saints. That's over. Now it's week six. You, you don't have, like you said, you don't have time for this. You don't have the luxury. And even if it does work, you know, can you, can you bank on it? You know, it's one of those things where like, you, you don't know until you, if he does it multiple weeks in a row, we're having a different conversation, but one, even one good week from AP doesn't make you feel good. Um, let's move on. Cause we spent way too much time on AP Marlon Mac. Uh, you know, we talked about this before. I don't think it, it doesn't qualify as a whack ass backfield uh, with Frank Gore and Marlon Mack because I think they both are involved here. But Marlon Mack looked good. Uh, he was he was the player that I think a lot of people talked about preseason the hype. Uh, you saw those flashes, and I think they continue to give him more work. I think it's a closer fifty fifty split with Frank Gore. Yeah, and and week one was the last time he touched the ball, other than this week, and he was again explosive. And they just probably are going to work him more into the. Passing game, rushing game, everything. Because Gore had a pretty rough outing. He broke off some good plays, but he fumbled, I think, twice. So, um, you know, Gore is going to continue to show signs of aging. The season's going to get longer. And Marlon Mack seems to be an explosive dude for this offense. It's kind of finding its way through, like, Luck's injury so far. So he could yeah. be a nice piece going forward for you. Yeah, and you're right that the, the Colts offense is – performing better than uh, I expected with a luck injury after we watched kind of week one and how things fell into place. So uh, better things, better things ahead. Uh, I've got John Brown on the list. I'm trying to see what his ownership percentage is because I feel like he should be owned in more leagues, but I think it's around 40 or 50. Okay. So I think like he, half and uh, half. Okay. So he technically he's probably qualifies being, I guess, under that 50% mark uh, to be added in leagues. I'm just pulling up his, uh, his stats in front of me. Okay, Yahoo leagues. Yeah, he's owning thirty-seven percent of leagues. Uh, he played eighty percent of the snaps uh, and saw seven targets and a touchdown against the Eagles. Uh, his health is always a concern, um, but you know if Arizona's running game stays shitty, which we think it will be with AP, they're going to continue to sling the ball. Does you know Carson again in a theory good matchup here uh, on paper where we're saying you can stream him. It's got to go to somebody. Is it Fitz? Uh, is it John Brown? I don't know, but I think he's worth getting off the wire. Yep. It, him and Jerron Brown swapped uh, stat lines, basically. They switched snap share. They switched everything. Uh, Walsh kind of called that last week. Yep. Just said, Bruce Harrings is a dick and we'll just flip flop. And so that could happen this week. Like this week, it could be Jerron Brown. It could be fucking JJ Nelson. Uh, I fell for this and played Jerron Brown this week and he did not great. And that's just kind of how it's going to be. And it sucks because the matchup is fantastic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So. Again, how lucky do you feel? Maybe listen to Walsh and see what his prediction is on the preview podcast, and that should be enough to uh, help you make your decision for lineups this week. Yeah. Um, next name on here, Vinny, Cooper, uh, Cooper Cup. Uh, he's on 47% of Yahoo Leagues. Uh, he may be emerging as the number one wide receiver there uh, with the Rams. Uh, so I agree, 15 yeah. 15 targets, 104 yards, and a touchdown in the last two weeks. Uh, he Dude, should he have dropped another touchdown. That. He dropped a game winner too, yes, which was had that. wild as hell. It hit him right in the, it was a tough ass catch, but he had it. Yep. It, it, I mean, yeah, he was, he dove, but it hit the hands. I, I was, as you watched it and I'm sure almost everyone did, they're like, you've got to mm-hmm. catch that. You know, all of us, all of us football players from the couches are upset that the athlete didn't catch the ball. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, I definitely would have dropped that. Oh, <laughs> straight up. I wouldn't have even died. It would have been like, oh, all right. Well, he overthrew me. <laughs> Let me try it. <laughs> Happy to be here. Uh, but, yeah, I, you know, he's still out there in a bunch of leagues, so I think he's someone that needs to be added uh, immediately if he's on your wire. Vinny, here's a guy I'm going to let you talk about real quick because you picked him up last week. You guys talked him up on the podcast, ASJ. Yeah, ASJ. He's got the uh, the tight end floor you look for, which is six targets, whatever you're going to do catch-wise, and then that touchdown upside. 
yep. and it looks like they're leaning on him down at the goal line. They put him on the outside a lot against corners, which is a great matchup because he's just – I think he's 6'7 or some shit like that. Yeah. yeah, He's a big motherfucker, and he is the most targeted guy on the Jets that isn't like a week-to-week like curse or – Robbie Anderson, like he's always getting this floor of like six, seven targets. So yeah, and we just we just talked about the possible streaming matchup against the Patriots if you really want to roll the dice, which in theory should again mean good things for ASJ. So mm-hmm. there you yeah, go. Game, game script will be huge for that too because if the Jets fall behind, they're going to start throwing a lot. Yep, hell yeah, uh, ASJ all the way. There we go, nice little rhyme. Aaron Jones, um, Adam. I don't really have much to add on him to be honest. As I'm getting further down the list. We fucking whiffed on this one. Yeah. Last week, because you know what sucks that we were right, because there was so much ambiguity with the situation. It was, you had no idea who was going to start. You had no idea who was going to play. If you played Aaron Jones, like, you're a better man than me, I guess, because that was, it was a ballsy start. It was a very ballsy start. It was, yeah. Honestly, the only place you probably saw it go down was in daily because it was a cheap toss in. But in regular leagues, I can't imagine a ton of people were doing it. Yeah. That being said, he looks fucking awesome. Yes, he does. So I'm just wondering, do you think that he keeps the number one job? If T- like, what if T-Monk, T- T- well, why can't I say it? Monk, T- Montgomery, man. Um, he comes back. Is he, is he going to steal the job? Or is it going to be like this weird three guy thing that the Packers usually play? Wait, do you mean a whack ass backfield? Because that's oh what. It- that would have been the perfect sound drop, but we don't fucking have any. <laughs> yes, it would. Well, well, we'll work on getting a sound drop. The whack ass backfields are definitely going to come back. Um, but yeah, I think it becomes a whack ass backfield with uh, Montgomery when he comes back. Um, again, unless he, you know, he goes out there, blows it out of the water again this week, and just, I just think they Montgomery looked looked good prior to the injury. I don't see how they just completely ignore him i think they have to both stay involved so i think it's a short-term win um right now long term i'm not as optimistic uh yeah. for jones right now so sell him high shrek if you're uh yeah if, if you, you got if, jones yeah i yeah sell him high i mean unless you need him again if you're using them to win games fucking do your thing if you can turn them into more value more consistent or at least reliable value that you know is going to last fucking do it Again, if you believe, if you know, if you're a Packer, if you're a faithful, and you you believe that this is like you know the guy, and this is what's going to happen, then obviously don't listen to me. But I think sell high, get something more consistent to help you as you look out over the next ten weeks or whatever it's going to break down as. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Sell him, sell him, sell him. Uh, Vinny Dion Lewis. Uh, I don't have his ownership percentage here, uh, but another game, another name people need to look out for on the wires, right? Yeah, he's doing a lot better than uh, McGillisley. Yep. <laughs> when he gets the when he gets the work, so um, it's it's an interesting ad. You, it's like one of those things where you're playing with the Patriots. You never know what the fuck's going to happen. But Deion Lewis looks great, and if he continues to do so, they might kind of fade out Gillisley just completely. Yeah, because in the beginning, Gillisley really all Gillisley was doing was falling into the end zone, not for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now that he's not just kind of falling into the end zone, I guess, uh, you know, it opens up the door here for uh, Deion Lewis to have some value. Next guy on the list, uh, San Francisco 49er, Matt Breda. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Breda, you got it. Breda. Um, super, super involved on Sunday, which I don't think anybody anybody expected at all. 10 carries, 49 yards, three catches for 22. Um, I'm not really sure what was up with Carlos Hyde, they say, could be from the hip injury, but we don't really know if that was the case or if it was the hot hand, as Shanahan calls it right now. I was going to say, yeah, that's what Kyle Shanahan said. He's just like, we're going to ride the hot hand, which is the worst thing we can hear in fantasy because you don't know. It's all about, like, the flow of the game, and that's you're not going to know it until the guy's in your lineup. So I would panic hard if I'm a Hyde owner and um, add Breda while you can. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like a whack-ass backfield. So – Another na- another spot you guys are going to have to watch. Um, again, we'll work on our drops and uh, maybe integrate these for the next preview. Uh, last but not least, Vinny, uh, Will Fuller. Touchdown uh, machine. Touchdown machine. And we talked about some some needs for, uh, you know, wide receiver if you lost OBJ and, and things like that. Here's an option, again, in a week where there's not a ton of wide receiver names you're throwing out there. Uh, an option. That's getting in the end zone. 
This is actually the only uh, – oh, no, we had John Brown. But, yeah, it's very, very thin for wide receivers. So if Will Fuller is still out there, go get him. He's not going to get two touchdowns every week. But who knows? I said that last week too. And it, <laughs> it happened. So. <laughs> and he did Don't it. fucking listen to me. Just Deshaun Watson will keep slinging touchdowns, I guess. It, it, it's it's incredible. I was It was very frustrating to watch as I watched the Chiefs game. Obviously, you know, they won. But uh, nonetheless. Uh, all right, Benny, that's it for waiver wire pickups. We're going to take a quick break to hear from Bench Boss, and then we're going to come back with some cool shit, weak shit, and then we're going to preview the Thursday night game. This year, dominate your friends with free play-by-play fantasy football from Bench Boss. Bench Boss is the first play-by-play fantasy football game where you must think like the players and coaches on the field as you predict the outcome of every play. Earn rewards as you compete against friends and fans across the country. Bench Boss is currently recruiting beta testers, and we need you. Visit BenchBoss.tv to learn more and sign up today. All right, guys, and we are back. That was Bench Boss. Again, you heard Vinny earlier on tonight talk about what the app is really all about and uh, a little tidbit for you guys that you didn't hear. Uh, his girlfriend, Lauren, was super happy with him while he was uh, watching the game and using the app. He paid attention to her a lot. So for those of you that are looking for a distraction uh, come game day, Bench Boss is the app for you. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny as we talked about it pre uh precast that uh you know for for girlfriends it may be a a blessing if you don't want to be bothered by your boyfriend um or if you do want attention it may be a bad thing so uh, a marketing tactic that we can discuss with the bench boss team uh for sure we'll get we'll get a testimonial from from more and throw it in there the second i'm just picking plays next second i'm single man it was just (laughs) it was a wild monday night oh well look how quick things can change guys Let's talk some cool shit. Uh, we talked about it as we opened up, Vinny. A.J. Green goes off. You're super happy. A.J. Green owners are super happy. Um, just awesome all around. You finally get to see A.J. Green as the machine that he is. Yeah, he could have had a bigger day, too. He had um, – actually, like, just looking at what A.J. Green did, he was pretty terrible. Like, he – those two picks that Dalton threw, those were right off A.J. Green's hands. And he fumbled. So it was a very uh, strange game. I mean, it was pouring there, but – uh, it was very good to see, you know, AJ get like a very heavy workload of targets, which is so good going forward for the Bengals, fantasy, everything. 13 targets, 189 yards. Hell yeah. Hell yeah is right, man. Hell yeah is right. Good for the Bengals. Good for you. Uh, and AJ Green owners, super happy. Probably, I'll say probably, probably won their week. Um, but I would say nothing for sure. Antonio Brown also goes the hell off. I'm just looking at his numbers here in front of me. 19 10, targets. 10 receptions for 19 targets in a game where Big Ben was super, super bad. Um, but 157 yards, incredible. Incredible. You had a hell of a week if you're an Antonio Brown owner. Yeah, definitely. He should have had a better game too. If yep. Ben was on point like a little bit. Getting 19, that's so incredibly wild. Yeah, I mean, it. Well, I'm interested to see if the trend continues. If he gets – because he's not going to get 19, I would assume, but you know, if he comes in with another 15, 17 targets, you know, you got to think Ben hopefully gets a little better from, from how bad he played last week. Um, huge, huge news, cool shit. Um, Deshaun Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, they just continue to make it happen literally until the, the last whistle and the last seconds ticked off the clock. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is making it happen. Deshaun Watson looks legit. Yeah, I, I imagine that stack won somebody millions of dollars because that was just crazy as hell. I think what did he, he completed only sixteen passes. Yep, those five fucking touchdowns and three of them are to Hopkins and it's, one as time expired. The, and, the, the, and they got the two point for for like you know. For let's, just pour, let's just pour it on, right? Why not? I mean, that stack definitely won people a ton of money. It pushed me out of pretty much any contest I was in that I was on the edge of. I lost wow. because people had the Deshaun Watch and DeAndre Hopkins combo to push above me. Yeah. Um, so, Also, we were a little um, sheepish on Watson, like season long. Well, actually, no, we weren't. But just like more confidence was instilled in me with him going like season long, just play him every week because Chiefs aren't um, like a pushover defense. He nope. – he just lit them up with, yeah. with minimal minimal work. Uh, had a really rough first half, wasn't panning out, and hung in there. He just kept force feeding the Hopkins, got that the worked. run game a little bit, and Watson just went off. It works. Uh, Kareem Hunt continues to play really, really, really well. Um, he's an every week start. Uh, 
if you're a Kareem Hunt owner, you're super happy. It's as cool as it gets. You know, yeah. rookie comes in, performs amazing. Uh, this one's for you. I'll leave it for you to introduce him. Doug fucking Martin. Yes. I'm so, so happy, Shrek. I'm sure you know. Oh, I have no doubt. <laughs> How fun. fun. Thursday was, last Thursday was like the best night of my life almost because he, I was so happy to see Martin back. Obviously, didn't get the workload that you wanted, but he looks really good. Got the touchdown for you. Don't get too greedy, but the work share is going to go up every single week now. You, you got to imagine they're going to ride Martin because he, he he looks too good to not give him somewhere like 18 to 20 touches a game. Wait, dude, but weren't all preseason? Weren't you banging the drum for DeQuiz Rogers to steal his job from him? Because I'm pretty sure you were his biggest advocate. Yeah, definitely. That sounds just like me. All, all yeah, all offseason I said DeQuiz is like a great running back and he's really good and he's going to keep, you know, Martin at bay, be the starter because I'm a stupid person. I'm glad we got that cleared out for everybody on the podcast. Uh, but let's move on, and we're going to talk Chiefs again. Alex Smith uh, continues to make it happen, throwing touchdowns. That offense looks great. Um, I, I'm just, as a Chiefs fan, upset it took this long for us to see Alex Smith play like he's playing, quite frankly. Takes time, Shrek. Appreciate the man while he's I, I, I love painting it, that beautiful art that he does every Sunday, man. He looks the, the best we've ever seen. That like for Alex Smith, I don't know. Even the Chiefs, great dude, great. He's made he's made that entire team so much better with the way he's playing. Uh, so hopefully it continues. Obviously, uh, big things to come for the Chiefs and Alex Smith. Uh, Devontae Adams. Uh, again, I think people were kind of unsure what to expect coming off the concussion, and he goes out there and blows shit up. Uh, looks great. Cool shit. Yeah, good for him. That seemed pretty cathartic at the end when he caught the game winner. So good for yeah. him to be back out there. Glad he's okay and obviously getting a lot of work. Uh, 11 targets, 66 yards, and that two touchdowns. So good for you, Devontae Adams. Glad you're healthy and out there. Yeah, man. Welcome back. Uh, we talked about uh, Aaron Jones here emerging and what you're kind of doing if you're a Jones owner. And we think that sell high if you can. Uh, but just – Something to watch. Cool shit. If you owned him, if you did play him this week uh, and wherever he did, you know, we tip our hats to you. Um, Marlon Mack, same thing. We kind of touched on him a little bit. Uh, you know, comes out, he looks explosive again compared to, you know, we like you said, we saw him in week one. He looks good. Frank Flores should continue to taper off. Um, Marlon Mack is definitely a name to watch as we go into uh, the future. Uh, that sounded I don't know. That was the best line I had right now. <laughs> into the future. <laughs> into, into the future. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's the best I got on that, I guess. Um, Cam, Cam Newton. Uh, not not what I expected out of Cam. Um, and I Cam, I think Cam listens and fucking hates us. And he's we've been off him since uh, what was it the the week before the Patriots yep. game when he just started. Yep. He's had thirty plus fantasy points uh, since then every week. So he, he really hates us uh, playing out of his mind right now. They are playing on Thursday night, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm thinking he burns you. <laughs> oh. he's, been, he's been putting up these back-to-back good weeks, and then he's like, yeah, fuck it. I don't feel like playing anymore. Well, especially if he hears us get back on him and talk about how good he is, he's definitely going to be like, oh, well, now I'm going to show those guys at LTFF. I'm going to shit the bed here and show them, show them how it is. Um Cam's just super petty and hates us, so he'll, he'll throw away his career, millions of dollars, just to say, fuck LTFF. And hey, that, that's that's our uh, claim to fame right there, guys. Listen, Cam Newton. Every time you hear hear and think of Cam, think of LTFF. Browns change at QB. Uh, the notes say here that it is good for the soul, Vinny. It is good for the soul because they looked so much better with Kevin Hogan in there. It was – Night and day, man. He's such a better quarterback right now than yes. Deshaun Kaiser. Like maybe he'll be better later on, but dude, just look. He brought light. Yeah, two two touchdown drives in a game that was absolutely lifeless for like the majority of the first half into the third quarter. He just totally rejuvenated the off- offense. And in in relief of Kaiser, the last game too, Hogan looked good again. So maybe the Browns get a little spark out of him or something like that. So. Yeah, they can't I'd like worse. to see where it goes. They definitely cannot get worse, Shrek. That is that is a great point. That's the optimist in me. Um, they definitely can't get worse. So that's all we got for cool shit. Let's flip it over, Vinny, and talk about some weak shit. And first thing we hear of whack-ass backfields, 
we broke down none this week because we talked about all the different things as we broke them, broke uh, down possibilities and how things are going to change. Um, but we don't think any of them qualify for a whack ass backfield quite yet. So we're going to revisit that next week in the recap. So let's move on to my man, Eric Edrop. I'm sorry, Eric Ebron. Um, he's Dis- disrespectful, man. That's disrespectful. Yeah, they're right. That is disrespectful. And he's now going to go off because I'm disrespecting him. Uh, <laughs> on Tuesday, Vinny, he was quoted as saying that he admitted to being in the dumps mentally this season, uh, but he is now optimistic about turning it around. So uh, that- who says that? Eric Ebron, man, uh, he's just he's gotten in touch with himself, you know, and uh, he's going to get dropped from a lot of fantasy lineups, as he should. Okay. Spin the wheel. Spin in the, the wheel. dumps. Sounds like fucking Charlie Brown. <laughs> fucking get back out there and catch some passes, man. We believe in you still. Well, not really. I'm, I'm kind of off him too, Shrek. And that's saying something. Yeah, that, <laughs> Eric Ebron's number one fan right here is, uh, is, is off of him. So uh, that's why I bought into Ebron. I bought into Vinny's nonsense, and this is where it's – where it's gotten me. So could have been, could have been my master plan. Just like get inside that mind of yours, plant the seed and just slowly back away and watch yourself destruct. Which if that was the plan, it worked out. I don't believe it was, but if it was touche, uh, <laughs> Nope. Just love Eric Ebron. Just, yeah, you just, you just love him. So that's cool. I get it. Uh, Ebron. See ya. Todd Gurley has his worst game of the season. Uh, I just want to say, I've been telling you guys all along, Todd Gurley is just a bad football player. You know, I mean, you watch him miss the, miss the touchdown. He fumbles into the end zone and, uh, Clearly, I've been right all along. Everyone else has been wrong. So, could just cut him. Just cut Ty Gurley. Yeah, um, things, things couldn't possibly get better. Yes, it's <laughs> nothing but down for Ty Gurley. Yeah, he's um, just bad. He's just bad. He's a bad football player. He doesn't have any good commercials, nothing. Um, but in all seriousness, yeah, it's just, just a bad game for Ty Gurley. He's going to bounce back. Um, he's a good football player for those of you. Yeah, that I would, I would say if you own Todd Gurley, watch out for the people like trying to get a trade for you right now because they're trying to get you while you're weak. Hold strong. There it is. Hold that line. Hold that line, guys. Hold. Hold. Hold the door. Um, if you don't, if you guys don't know Game of Thrones, then that was just weird for you. Uh, Sharkandrick West gets two touchdowns on three touches. Um, you know, definitely not the ideal thing for Kareem Hunt owners. Um, it was just frustrating. I own Sharkandrick West for almost literally no reason, but I own him anyway. I guess because I have to have a chief and. Uh, you know, I watched him on my bench score with two touchdowns, which which is great, but West is nothing more than a handcuff to Kareem Hunt. Totally agree. And this was a free game, but you can you can still hate West if you want. He he took away from you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a free game, but it's uh it's fair enough. Um, and Amari Cooper, I'm not even sure if he's still playing football. Dude, uh, what the fuck? He was <laughs> dude, second rounder. Let's go. What are you doing? Bad man. I don't, I don't, what do you do? What do you do if you own him? What do you do if you don't own him? Do you want to try and buy low? Do you – I don't even oh. – I'm so, so lost, dude. I feel like I he's impossible to buy low on. I don't I don't think you – well, yeah, I, I agree. I think he is probably impossible to buy low on. But if you believe you can buy low on him, I think you could just wait another week. Because I think you're going to have another dud week here. And then I think it's going to be easier to buy low on Amari Cooper uh, after another bad week. Um, if you believe, I don't, I don't know that I believe he's going to just bounce back and be the guy that everyone expected with the second round pick. But if you do, I think you can probably wait another week before buying low. Yeah, that's fair. I just, yeah, it's like one of those things where people are so attached to the price they paid that mm-hmm. they are like, even though they're in a shit situation where you, you don't want to play the guy, but you don't want to give them away either, especially for like peanuts. Yes. Yeah. You're stuck. You're stuck in that, that like awkward in between. Sucks. Uh, I, I just wish he was doing good. That's all. Well, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with their car and his whole thing too. Dude, did back. you see they're going to force him back? We forgot to do that in the injuries, but they're going to force him back. I think this week, maybe I saw Jack Del Rio said that at a presser. It's a fucking mistake. It, it is. They should wait out. Like, I don't know when is, I don't even know when their buy is, but I don't dude, either, but it's a mistake, but yeah, get him, get him healthy. As a Chiefs fan, it. whatever the division wants to do, that's bad. I'm cool with it. Um, Big Ben, we talked about Antonio Brown having a great day. Big Ben was terrible. I don't remember his exact quote, but it was something like, maybe I just don't have it anymore, or maybe I'm just not good anymore. And then he turned around, what was it, yesterday or today, and said, like, yeah, like I still have it. I'm still like one of the greatest QBs or something. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> it's just uh, not feeling it right now. Wishing he retired at this point. He's off his 
proper. He's, a, he's an exhausted man right now. He is can't deal with Le'Veon Bell, Brown throwing tantrums, Bryant. Okay. They, just, they can't get it going. Yeah, I mean, you got you got to assume he bounces back from five five interceptions. But if you're a big Ben owner, bad week, very bad week. Agreed. Yeah, that's it. And we talked about Latavius Murray. Uh, he sucks. He's not the guy. Jerk McKinnon's the one you want to own there. Uh, Latavius Murray is bad. Yeah, that didn't look encouraging whatsoever. So he he was they, probably right. He said his ankle wasn't healthy. I chose not to listen, and uh, he was right. And they wanted to feed him. You know, they fed him to, to start. They wanted him to be the guy, just like they fed Dalvin Cook, and he couldn't do anything with it. So, uh, again, whether it was injury or not, bad for Latavius Murray, and it will continue that way. Um, but, Vinny, let's talk Thursday night football. We get the Eagles and the Panthers. Let's start on the Eagles' side of the ball. Carson Wentz uh, has been – he's shown up to play some football, quite frankly. Uh, lately, he goes three first-quarter passing touchdowns. Uh, has four four scores, which was a career high for him. Three hundred and four passing yards. Uh, it says it's his third three hundred yard game in five outings this season. So um, that's pretty great. He's a he's a QB one. I agree. It's just the matchup is a little tough going into the Panthers. It's um, not great. It's not a it's great. Not, it's not great. But I think you can have confidence because we've seen him like the the first week when he played against the the Redskins when they had you know their great pass D. He wound up you know, making some plays. And that's the thing about Wentz. He'll always make something out of nothing at some point. So I think he has that floor that we were alluding to before, like 15, 16 yep. at worst. And then you always have that ceiling where he's just going to go nuts. So I think, yeah, you can get away with playing Carson Wentz. It sucks for Thursday, but, you know, matchup isn't great. But, dude, roll Wentz out. He is – he's playing very well right now. Yes, I agree. He is the he's the real deal. Uh, let's talk running backs, the like Garrett Blunt, Wendell Smallwood, Clement, um, Blunt, uh, he didn't really, I think, play all that well. I feel like for the, his touches, 14 touches, 74 yards, um, uh, I think just based on the game flow, I figured they would kind of pound the ball with him a little bit. Um, so I was a little disappointed. I mean, he's the guy Smallwood leaves with the, the knee injury. Um, but if you don't look at Garrett Blunt, it's, it's, he's the guy, you know, yeah, again, not the greatest matchup against the Panthers, but Blunt, when he is running, is averaging over five yards a carry. So that is that is some good stuff. I guess he always has that potential to get the goal line carry as well. So uh, it's just always shitty to roll out a guy like that who's yeah. touchdown dependent, you know, not getting a lot of work. Uh, if Smallwood's out like he was last week, I think it's, he's an okay play. He did okay last week when he was when he was out as well, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's one of those things you don't want to do. The matchup sucks. See what your options are. Again, you may be forced with bye weeks and whatnot. You may have a better upside with somebody else. You know, I don't expect Blunt to go off for three touchdowns and a hundred you know, hundred and fifty yards, but right. you know, who the who the hell knows? Um let's talk wide receivers, Alshon Jeffrey, Nelson Aguilar. Um you know, Alshon Jeffrey got obviously held in check uh with Patrick Peterson. Uh, but you know, last week, but he's going to bounce back. I think we watched, uh, Aguilar and, you know, Torrey Smith and everybody else kind of pick up the slack for Alshon not being as quote unquote involved because of Patrick Peterson. Um, so I think Alshon bounces back here uh, a little bit and we see Aguilar come back to earth just because I hate seeing him do anything decent. That's just a personal vendetta. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, he's he's getting the work or targets or whatever, but it's just not panning out. You know, when he has a bad matchup, he doesn't show up because he would have to feed off like a Jay Cutler funnel, which he does not currently have because uh, Wentz is spreading it around. So if Alshon's having a rough outing, which I think he might against the Panthers, I consider him a little sittable right now because uh, there, there wasn't a whole lot of room for like Marvin Jones and Golden Tate last week. So That's I, would be, I would be pretty wary. Wary. And uh, Aguilar, like I said, he is bad. All he'll do is break those crazy plays. Don't roll your dice on that. Same thing with Torrey Smith. I wouldn't do it. Nope. They're just going to break your heart. Break your heart. Zach Ertz uh, has been awesome. You're going to roll Zach Ertz out there. I don't think that's even a question. So Every single week. Play him. Uh, and then let's go to the flip side of the ball and talk about the Carolina Panthers. Cam, we kind of touched on him. He's looked great, which means he's bound for a letdown. Um, just because we like him, or we he we've seen him play what, good, and we've given him some praise, he's bound to shit the bed. Do you think he actually shits the bed here? Uh, I don't. 
I don't because uh, he, the matchup is fantastic against the Eagles, giving up so many points to the wide receivers and quarterbacks. So you, you got to roll Cam out there, ride this for what it is. He he could shit the bed if he hates us, but um, I, I think he's a good play. And yeah, I, I would roll Cam out. The thing is, he's not doing it rushing wise. He he didn't even rush once last week, which was wild. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. But. Yeah. He makes it happen for now. I agree, though. I think he has a he has a nice game, um, and I don't expect him to shit the bed. So time will tell. Jonathan Stewart, uh, I think he was battling a an actually an ankle injury or something. Uh, was it an ankle? Uh, hold on, Jonathan Stewart. Yep, ankle returned to practice on Tuesday, so he'll be yeah. fine. He's going to play, um, but uh, I think he's you know he's a running back too. He'll get some goal line work uh, against the Eagles. And then McCaffrey, I just I don't have his stats in front of me. Uh, do you have anything on McCaffrey? I'm just trying to pull it up. Yeah, he did okay. He got his first touchdown uh, at the goal line there from Cam, which was a cool, pretty cool, uh, very well designed play, mm-hmm. which was neat. Just kind of flipped it to him over there with like a misdirection. But uh, McCaffrey, man, I don't know what to make. Like he's he gets ten targets one week and then like six the next, and I don't, I don't know. He's just not like an integral part of their offense yet. Yeah, I think in PPR you're still probably rolling them out there, um, just based on the the looks, the upside. I think. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, especially with like Stewart a little banged up. Stewart's kind of like blunt right now too. Like he's giving you the same kind of floor and ceiling yep. that he does. So he's not gonna blow it out. Yeah, the higher upside is clearly with McCaffrey, especially if you're in a PPR league, guys. I think you you probably have him in your lineup just based on. Definitely a little safer in PPR. But. Yeah, I mean, even last week he had five receptions for 31 yards. So if you're in a full-point PPR, that's still 8.1 without a touchdown. So, you know, it's not a bad floor to have. Um, you know, particularly depending, again, how buys and everything else kind of hit you guys, uh, it could be something you're dealing with. On the wide receiver end, Kelvin Benjamin goes four for 58 and a touchdown. Uh, Funch is seven for 53 and a touchdown. And then Ed Dixon five receptions for 175 yards. Um, that's fucking one game nonsense. It's more yards than he's had in the entire 2016 season. I don't expect that to repeat at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, man. Uh, yeah, the, the targets aren't really there when you got five this week. I I just don't – I wouldn't want to roll him out there, especially having like the best game of his, of his career. So don't risk it. You don't need to. There are other options. Yeah, and then Kellen Afon just roll him out there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're going to have great games, both of them, because they're going to beat up on the Eagles secondary. 100%. Uh, anybody else on the, in this game you want to talk about? Uh, no. That's All it, right. man. I'm good. Let's pick them. I'm taking Cam and the Panthers. I'm going to go with Wentz and the Eagles here. All right. We split on our one and only podcast pick uh, <laughs> of the week for us. So with that, guys, we're going to jump into three questions. The first one we have on here, um, you know, we'll talk about it, but it's more as a, uh, I think, a general thing about you guys need to figure out your rules and always do it ahead of time because everyone panics when something happens and they realize they don't have rules in place. You're going to understand after I read it. So let's start with this one. It says, fantasy scoring question. A team in our league started uh, Tyreek Hill at wide receiver for Kansas City and the Kansas City defense on Monday night. Hill scored on a punt return. So the question is, does that team get credited twice for Hill scoring that punt return? One score is a wide receiver, and the other score for being a Kansas City defense slash special teams. Um, and we discussed this, you know, if any I know in advance of the podcast earlier in the day, we kind of sent back a response to Bob here. Um, but I think it just highlights, like, one, know your rules, and two, kind of talk about your rules before the season starts because, like, nobody thinks about things until they come up, and then they're pissed when it doesn't go their way. Yeah, don't, and also, like, I feel like this guy was complaining to the league that he didn't get double points. Like, dude, if you didn't get the points, that's not how your league is set up. Don't go crying for points that people are not going to give you. Like, yeah. <laughs> no one's going to be like, oh, yeah, you should get more points and possibly beat this guy or like move up in playoff standings because that shit does matter later on. Absolutely. With point differential. So don't go looking for that shit. No one pities you. No one's going to be able, no one's going to break the rules for you. So please don't do this sort of stuff. And like you said, Shrek, know the rules and have them set up. And if you want to change them, do it before the season. Yeah. Again, yeah, it is what it is, man. I mean, if, that's, if this is what you guys do and you give double points and you've been doing it all year, great. If not, tough shit. That's the way it goes. Figure it out next year if you really want to petition for it. I mean, I think the standard is that you never get double points, but some world, some leagues do funky things. So, teach their own. 
All right, Vinny, this one comes from Ben on Instagram. He says, trade offer, Mark Ingram and Keenan Allen for AJ Green. I don't know what side of the deal he's on. What side of the deal do you want to be on? Uh, this is uh, – it, it's not tough. It's just an interesting trade. Uh, Ingram and Keenan Allen clearly win um, because, dude, you're getting Keenan Allen and Mark Ingram, who AP just left. So you're getting – a fringe RB one, definitely an RB two every single week. And then you get Keaton Allen, who's a wide receiver one. Yep. And um, whoever's giving or getting AJ green, like you're giving up your, uh, like your, your stud. Yeah. You're giving up a stud who is, who could possibly wind up as the wide receiver one with the way he's been targeted the last couple of weeks. But you, you don't want to do that. You don't yeah. want to give up your guy. I mean, you are getting two people back, but I think the, uh, the Ingram and Keenan Allen side definitely wins. I agree. I agree for sure. Um, and Keenan Allen, guys, you know, we've heard actually from quite a few people about his – people worried about him being injured. Um, we have no indication that Keenan Allen is injured or people worried about him becoming injured. We, we kind of hear it on a weekly basis. He looks good. He had a bad week. Don't panic on Keenan Allen. He looks good. He, he's going to continue to get fed. Um, and I know that's not related to this question directly, but just a note. Yeah. Um, also, like, let's say you're worried about Keenan Allen and you do this trade and you get A.J. Green. He can get hurt the same like percentage yeah. of chance that Keenan Allen can get hurt. Everybody is up on the field. Everybody can get hurt. It's not like – I mean, other guys could be more sturdy or have a better history, but, dude, anything can happen. We saw that with Odell. Yeah, the Odell just, thing literally is, is textbook. Yeah. We, watched all, we watched all game and then Eli just threw him up. He threw it high. Odell went up and the way yeah. he came down was, you know, was enough. So Injuries can happen to anybody. At all times. Third and final question. Many comes in from Manny on Instagram. He says, Jimmy Graham and CJ Anderson for Rob Gronkowski. Again, I don't know what side of the deal he's on. What side of the deal do you want? Jimmy Graham and CJ Anderson. Give me an RB one and a tight end one for, you know, Gronk again. He's the stud that you're giving up or getting. And you just want to be on the side with the two guys you can play every single week. Yeah. And Gronk, not for nothing. He's been banged up. You know, he didn't, you know, he didn't play this week. Um, so, you you know, you take that that risk too. I mean, when has Gronk really been healthy and played a full season? Again, you're predicting injuries, but, you know, I agree. You want it, you get the two guys. Jimmy Graham's good. He gets a touchdown. Obviously, this week it hurts with the bye, but you're yeah. still going to do it with grab CJ Anderson and you just sit on Jimmy Graham for a week. Exactly. Yeah, you're getting two, two ones that you could play every single week and then, you know. Yeah, guys, don't get don't get short sighted on you know attaching just to name value of yeah it's Gronk. I know C.J. Anderson and Graham have name value, but people get too locked into the name value. Or I paid a second round pick, or I paid. A, we talked about it before with Amari Cooper. You know why people can't buy low? Don't get locked in just because you paid what you paid. We're going into week six. You know what you paid is fucking irrelevant now. It's in the it's past. Irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You need to win now. Think about your team now and 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 moving forward. Um, but with that. Guys, previews coming out Friday morning. So you'll get your first half on Friday morning, second half on Saturday morning, special weekend edition. Coming to you guys from Don and Walsh. And they're going to break down all the games, uh, studs, duds, and everything in between. Hopefully we'll have some more clear injury statuses for you guys. Uh, If you like the podcast, don't like the podcast, give us a review. Uh, Drop us some stars, one, five, uh, and uh, get the apps. We're on uh, Android. Apple, and again, you can talk fantasy football all the time with us with the Alexa skills. But for Let's Talk Fantasy Football, I am Nick Shrek. He's Vinny Gonzalez. We will catch you on the flip side. This has been Let's Talk Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening.